As you watch this video, there are millions of people that call themselves Christians, but have been sold a lie. This video is made possible by the Daily Disciple Club on Patreon. To support my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily, join Patreon today. This lie takes multiple forms. The belief that Christianity is just a life improvement plan. It's just about God helping me have better relationships or a better marriage or um, a better business plan. God is just about trying to, you know, give me these tips and tricks in order to make my life better. And that's why we're often offered up so many of these Christian TED Talks as sermons because people want to know how they can live a better life and ultimately Jesus is just a means to give them that. Hey friend, welcome back to Prosper Church. My name is Pastor Kenny. Thank you for joining us, but I want you to buckle up though because we're right in the middle of our sermon series, How to Be Successful Like Solomon. But don't you fret my follically challenged fellows, no hair required. We took a break from our sermon series last week to hear from Pastor Curtis. He preached on the story of Zacchaeus and taught us all that even short kings can inherit the kingdom of God. I hope you enjoy our worship experience today. Our worship band just wrote a new song, so you can be sure to hear that about three or four times. But without further ado, let's dive in. Then there's the prosperity gospel, folks. It's just about what I can get from God. I mean, that's what people misunderstand about God is he wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to have this abundant life. He doesn't want you to just be poor and scraping by and be some loser. No, he wants you to be this rich, wealthy person that has all your stuff together. That's why I have a private jet. I have a mansion. I have a jacuzzi. Like God gave me that stuff because he wanted me to be happy. Then there's the legalistic gospel, what I need to do to be saved. You see, what people don't understand about God is that he ain't no slacker. When he makes a team, he wants the best and the brightest. The question is, what do you have to offer? I see people parading around thinking that God will take them in just as they are. Now they haven't even cleaned up their life first. To play off a quote from JFK, or maybe it was Ronald Reagan, I believe, don't ask what God has done for you, ask what you can do for God. Now, the truth is there are a lot of scriptures about obeying and following God's commands, but what these folks have yet to understand is that the Bible is clear about our lack of ability to hold to God's law perfectly. So what is this big lie that so many people that call themselves Christians have bought into? Basically, that the gospel is about me, about the wonderful life that I can have or what I need to do for God or what I can get from God. But the gospel is about God and his glory. This makes it so clear for us as Jesus was preparing for his death on the cross his soul was troubled. And it says this in John 12. It says, now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Okay, hold that for a second. But I want to go back. When we talk about the gospel, the good news, we also need to talk about the bad news of sin, judgment, God's wrath. And people don't like to talk about this and they don't want to present this because look, if we're trying to present Jesus as just this cool, nice guy, this nice teacher who came to make us have better lives, then this idea of wrath and sin and judgment is kind of offensive, right? But the truth is we can't understand the good news if we don't understand the bad news. You know, a lot of people think about the gospel that we were drowning in our sin and Jesus kind of threw us this life raft and we grabbed onto it and he kind of reeled us in and pulled us up onto the boat. And that's close. But the truth is, is that we were at the bottom of the ocean. We were dead, honestly. And Jesus dove in and scooped us out. I think that's a little bit more accurate. Obviously, no analogy is perfect, but it just goes to show that we had no ability to save ourselves. Like it says in Ephesians, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Don't hide the truth about sin and God's wrath towards it and ultimately his judgment towards sinners. That is eternity in hell. Like if we truly believe that hell exists and that is what the Bible teaches, right? If we truly believe that, that this exists, right? This place exists. If they don't put their faith in Jesus, then why don't we talk about it? I think of Galatians 1 10 where it says, for am I seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I was still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. I remember Jesus saying, you're either with me or against me. Like he wants to draw the clear line here. Would you rather gain their approval and compromise the gospel, compromise the truth, or would you rather seek the approval of God by what you're saying, right? Like ultimately that's what matters. That's what should matter. Okay, let's go back to God's glory for a second. The idea of God's glory can be something that's hard to quantify. What does it mean to glorify something? I think of, and I've heard it put, uh, like a spotlight. That is what the intention is. And so in God saving us and coming to this world, he wanted to put a spotlight on himself and how glorious and merciful and loving and also just he is and is fulfilling justice and being the atoning sacrifice for our sins. He wanted to put the spotlight on himself because when all of our eyes are on him, that is exactly the perfect 
place for our eyes to be because he's the most glorious in the universe. Like that's a good thing. I think about it like this. Think of when you're watching like a sunset and you're watching a sunset and you text your friend, you're like, you need to see this right now. And they come out and they're enjoying it too. They're taking in this glorious beauty and they're like, they're thanking you. They're like, oh, thank you for inviting me out here so I can see this too. In effect, that's what we're doing with like Christ. Like we want people to see his glory and they, you know, ultimately maybe they won't thank us for it, right? Like some people will, some people won't. But ultimately it's like, this is the most glorious thing in the universe. This is better than a sunset. This is better than a glorious mountaintop. Like this is amazing. What I want to encourage you towards is a God-centered gospel. It's not about me and what I can be or become or what I need to do or what I can get, but rather about God and what he has done. Put the spotlight on him. I think it's a while that we're ashamed of sharing God with people. You think about, okay, if you were friends with LeBron James or pick any celebrity that you want to or, you know, famous person, if you were friends with him and you invited him over and you had also invited your friends over, you wouldn't hesitate to like introduce them together, right? Like, oh yeah, I know LeBron James. Like, oh yeah, you got to come over and meet him. And they'd be like, oh my goodness, I get to meet LeBron James. Ultimately, okay, people probably have a better reaction to LeBron James than they will Jesus, at least depending on who they are. But ultimately, it's like, man, you're, you're like, why are you ashamed, man? Like, it's God. Like, he's infinitely more glorious and amazing. And in him is new life and salvation and a new idea identity and this new purpose and also this like rest, this deep rest in who God is and what he has done. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey there, welcome back to Prosper Church. My name is Pastor Kenny and we're what wonderful. What are we? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Subscribe or else the void, it's taking me. Ah.